Good evening, this is Wi-Fi Sheep live on Twitch. It's coming up to 8 o'clock. Hello there, good evening. This is Wi-Fi Sheep, 8 till late, live on Twitch with me, Tom. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, sorry we weren't here last week. A few things got in the way. Primarily, we were over at the Wakefield Computer Show, which is all about the Risk OS operating system, and that is what we're featuring tonight. For tonight, it's a little bit different. We've teamed up with Amcog Games, an independent developer of games for the Risk OS platform, and we're going to showcase and play what is becoming a vast back catalogue of all independently created games. This is Risk OS. This is a special build of Risk OS from Wi-Fi Sheep. It's free and it finds home on the Raspberry Pi. It runs on a number of systems, but we're running it on a Raspberry Pi this evening. That's a Raspberry Pi 2 board, for those of you that are interested. I have here the selection of games we're going to go through one by one over the next few hours. If you have any questions, you can, of course, leave a comment live on Twitch. Or if you're watching this on a repeat, you can drop us a line on Twitter. Our Twitter address is at Wi-Fi Sheep. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. Now, as I mentioned, all these games are created pretty much by one indie developer. His name is Anthony Bartram, and I caught up with him a little earlier in the year at the Southwest Computer Show. Anthony, thanks so much for talking to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Just explain a little bit about what Amcog actually is and what you do. So Amcog Games develops games for the Risk OS platform um, and uses it as a creative springboard potentially for other platforms as well. And it also creates uh, original music, which I do with a partner of mine who also contributes game ideas. And I also have, in addition to those two things, an original sound generation technology for Risk OS, something that enhances its um, capabilities, which was stuck a bit in the early 1990s. So you use Risk OS as your base platform. Is that all you develop for? In terms of games, I do plan to support mobile platforms porting maybe a couple of titles. But as I said earlier, it's like a springboard. It provides a, a, a creative space because on a lot of other platforms, you have a lot of other competition and distractions. I get a lot of engagement with customers on this platform and it's quite good for being creative about it. So how many titles have you actually released so far? I'm currently losing count. <laughs> it might be 11. 11? my website. I think, if you count the development kit and our DSP, I'm doing about two games per year, typically. But it may be a little more than that. Now, you've also developed a new is it audio suite for Risk OS, and that's possibly going to be part of the operating system going forward. Is that right? It would be logical if it rolled into the operating system. I was having a chat to you all today. So um, I think that's, uh, that's something which would happen in due course, naturally. So yeah, basically, it um, extends the sound capabilities of RiskOS, makes the envelope command work. Uh, but it's sort of like, if you can imagine that the BBC Micro capability had been put into RiskOS and it had been upscaled to do samples and more waveforms and sound effects like reverb and chorus and delay. And that yeah. Is. Okay, so you're going to demonstrate some stuff for us now, is that right? So what, what are we yes. going to look at? So we'll start with something that's a bit like Lemmings. This is called Mop Tops. The difference between this and Lemmings is you have objects you can use uh, rather than changing what the, the uh, characters do. So we'll start on level one. All the games have original music. Let me bring that down a bit so you can hear me. Um, these are the mop tops. Right. I'm going to take an electric fan and place it here to blow them across. To me, this makes perfect sense. I don't see why that's a usual idea. I'm going to take a spring so they can land on that. So in, in Lemmings, you'd have an umbrella here to make them drop, maybe, yeah. you know, some other means to get them across. If you don't have the uh, spring there, they die, which I've just demonstrated. And you don't have to wait for them all to exit. You can um, accelerate the game. 
There are 30 levels in this title, and uh, each one is accessible via a level code, so you don't have to go back to the beginning all the time. I'll show you a little tiny bit more. Continue. And uh, I've got an electric drill. That sound is made by the uh, sound extension we mentioned earlier called RDSP. And so they drill the way through. And then you've got, you've got a ladder here which you can use. You have to look at the top. And it just carries on like that. So we'll move on to the next game now. We also have arcade style games as well. Let's go for the 3D one. Okay, so this uses a, it's a custom 3D engine, is it? Or? Right, it's all written in BASIC. Okay, so all, all, all BBC BASIC? All BBC yeah. BASIC. It uses something called the painter's algorithm, so you draw from the back, and then you uh, uh, billboard the sprites, so they're, they're basically scaled. So it's, it's, yes, it's in situ. It's, I use yeah. my own, I have my own development kit, which I've written for Risco, is to make the games easy to write. So okay. I can write them in as little as two hours. I think uh, one of the games I saw it showed it two days to write, but this one took more than a year because I had to develop some new technology. Yeah. So we'll start at the beginning very briefly. Let's see so it's a vector graphic, I've shaded it as you get further away. I've got some ammunition there. And you have to collect your fuel cans to get to a plane to escape the island. Essentially, here we have a zombie who moonwalks, which I uh, personally quite it's appropriate for zombies, as pioneered by Michael Jackson. So you can shoot him. Like there we go. There you go. And he just crumbles to dust. And you carry on going until you've got enough fuel cans which are identified on the screen. If I zoom forward, we can quickly die. Um, this level was done by Vince Hart. So Vince is, uh, writes quite challenging levels. As you can see, we have quite a few uh, zombies here. Um, and my goal is to die so I can show you what happens when you die. So uh, I'm being attacked by a large number of the undead. And uh, my health is deteriorating. So when you die, you become a zombie. Oh, OK, that's different. Yeah. Do forever to wander the island. But in case no one believes that's written in basic, we can, through the magic of risk versus open model, press shift, double click that, and then I've got a decent editor up. If you look at the image, you can see that it's just basic. And you can see the whole source code. Yep, nothing's crunched. I keep it all open as possible so that people can understand what I've done and um, if they want to incorporate it into their own projects. Let's do the stunt driver one that's recently come out. Eternally, I tend to think of this as being a lot like Scalectrics. So yeah. it's all done in basic. The, co the levels are text files and contain a program for the cars to follow. They, when I was developing it, if they go too fast, they used to fly off the track. So be a bit careful. You have different difficulty levels. RDSP be quite uh, loud there. Um, let's go to track two. And we'll go for the we'll go for car. I think I'm supposed to be good at this. And I can now choose a car, which is a recent update. I'll go for a Lamborghini. And let's go for a slightly gentler piece of music. And I can accelerate. Overtake him. And uh, you have to jump over ramps. I was going to say, you've got jumps and obstacles. That's right, yeah. and on a hard level, they have a chance to catch me up. And um, oil there, be careful about. Get in there. The music is the uh, original music that I write and record. That's uh, so all done by yourself, then? It, mostly, right? some of it's co-written. The track on um, the zombie game that you heard was uh, co-written by, actually written by a friend of mine, that one. We co-write together, and um, a lot of the music's my own in these games, that's right. Uh, if I don't jump, um, miss the ramp there, you die. That's got quite, <laughs> it's got quite a boom to it, hasn't it? <laughs> um, yes, it does. But I think sound effects are important. So, there you go. There's just a brief introduction to some of the games from Tony. Uh, again, more information about Amcog Games uh, for sales and information, it's www.amcog-games.co. UK. Also, apologies for the slight sound issues at the start of our broadcast today. Hopefully that's now sorted. Thank you for those of you that pointed that out to me. Anyway, 
as mentioned, this is RiskOS 5. This is the Wi-Fi sheet build of RiskOS 5, which you can get hold of from the IDENT computer website. That's www.ident-online.co.uk forward slash computer. And you can click on the RiskOS tab and it's a free download. The games we're showing tonight aren't free. They're, again, they're sales from Amcol Games. But Tony has been kind enough to lend me the games tonight so I can show them to you. So a reminder, these are all independently created by Anthony Bertram, or Bartram I should say, and we're going to go through them one by one and have a look. So we're going to start with Exeroid. I think it's Exeroid, is it Zero? Right? I can't remember. Anyway, this uses a 3D based engine against all written in BBC Basic. Okay, so basically it's a speedrunning game where you have a series of blocks that you can fly over and they, depending on what the colour is, it depicts what happens to the ship. So you've got to grind past all the levels. Uh, you have options to set difficulty and level set. So we'll start at 1 to 7, beginner. It has a passcode system so you'll be able to jump through levels if you've copied the uh, level key. It's a bit like um, Lemmings is a good example of one that used a very similar thing. So anyway, let's uh, make a start. You also notice the music is basically all original. Let's see if we can speed up a bit. And see how smooth running this game actually is. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was much better at this in rehearsals. <laughs> and you see the uh, distance marker in the top centre of your screen there is counting down as we get nearer. Come on, come on, there we go, green. Ooh, stay off the red. So it's using a custom 3D engine that uh, Anthony wrote himself. There we are. Unfortunately, I've died too many times. Never mind, we'll go again. Try and pick up a bit of speed. Ooh. Perhaps not that bad. Okay. Again, I'll remind you, this is all running just on a Raspberry Pi 2 board. So it's not even a particularly new or faster Raspberry Pi. Hey, we got through. <laughs> yeah. And I especially just to take some bits slowly as possible. level three so the game has a really good pace to it if you get into a, ooh, a good rhythm no unlike me who's just killed again if you get into a good rhythm you can just literally can fly through the levels to a certain degree you also notice the music tracks changed Oh, 
Come on, come on. There we go. Hanging on the edge here. There we go. Right, we've passed level one again. It's just about hitting it right, really. Ah. Again, controls very simple on this. It's just left, right arrows up and down for speed and brake. And there are a number of uh, control schematics, if you like, that you can use depending on what your preferences are. Oh, there we are. Nearly. Try and stay out the red blocks if we can. Come on. I forget what the yellow is, but it's um Oh Yeah. <laughs> oh no, right. You see here you've got a number of different uh, keyboard layouts. These are pretty much standard across the whole AMCOG game range. So once you know what the controls are, it's quite easy to jump from one game to another. So let's try that again. What was it? Yeah, mud. Which is the problem. Let's try again. See, that wasn't so difficult the third time. Or was it the fourth time now? I can't remember. Anyway. I'll build some speed back up. Oh, no. So close. So close yet. No. Yes. Getting stuck again, so I'm going to stay this side. Oh, come on. Do you have to watch for the air contours because that can throw you off? Okay, we'll go for one last we'll go for one last run.
There you go, it does get easier after yeah, a little bit of work and time when you get there. You can really start to fly through this once you kind of got the rhythm and you roughly know where you're going and don't do that <laughs> yeah try not to hit the red because it's a sort of a stop stop block area hop over here Jump off that. Hey, level four. This is the furthest we've got. down a little bit I think you are against the timer so come on come on hey level five What on earth? Oh. oh really? <laughs> oh dear, there we are, Ed. Level five. Not bad going. So that's uh, Xroid. From Alcog 4, Risk OS. Great little game, that. So we'll just exit out. And again, I'll just get you the sales information. For .uk. Okay, then. So we'll close that down. And we'll have a look at another game. So this is Protector which is a 2D side-scroller, again, written in BBC Basic and available from Amcog Games. And again, you'll see the same uh, control set up for the game, so controls, click to start, quite self-explanatory really. And you get the uh, obligatory uh, arcade game score panel. And we're off.
You'll notice particularly this game uses the Risk Arrest sprite engine. So yes, it's all written in BBC Basic, but unlike the BBC Micro, we do have the power of a Raspberry Pi. So we're running on relatively modern hardware and we have a sprite engine built in. And this allows us to do things like this with relative ease. I think we hit space. There we are. Oh, that was me getting clumsy. Also have to watch out for these little dots that's like um I don't know what they have like mines or something that appear. So they're dropped by these blocks. This to be fair is a really nice game actually. Until that happens. <laughs> and I didn't move, which didn't help matters. Oh, I get turned to my name, and now something. There we are then. Oh, there we are. I've actually made it onto the uh, lever board. I like this. Let's play this again. Tony, who's just uh, dropped us a comment under the Amcog name on the uh, Twitch chat, so uh, in other words, the boss is watching tonight. Great to have you with us, Tony. I uh, hope you're enjoying it, and yeah, just mentioning about the sound. Again, apologies for the sound, don't quite know why we've got such low levels tonight, but hopefully that's sorted it now. The sound and audio work on these games is superb, so it's a shame we can't hear it properly, but hopefully that's fixed it now. Hmm. 
that was fun. I have no idea what happened there. Let's play that again. So, as you can expect, number one. Um, yeah, calm for the storm. I will say cheers to Anthony as well. Good to hear from you. I haven't heard from you for a little while. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the info on the air sound. Yeah, I don't know what that was. It's possible I had something turned down a little too much on my end. Don't just go and plow straight into the enemy either. Oh dear. <laughs> what? Oh right, okay. So much for my gentle pace, blimey. Say Tom to I want to know where I am. Yeah, a little bit better. There we go. Oh, I like the um, Starfield. I like a good arcade Starfield that um, has multi stars moving at different levels. Don't ask me why, just anyone who can pull that effect off. And uh, to his credit, Tony has, and I really like that. Ah, right. And Tony's just informed me that if any purple... Right, I've been shooting the purple life forms. Right, that explains a lot. Okay. Oh, I see. I'm with you now. Right. I've just been shooting everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So apparently, we have to, I'm with you. We have to shoot basically the green things to protect the uh, native species, which are the purple things. I'm basically not doing what I've just been doing for the 10 15 minutes and basically shooting everything. Oh, that was clever. Poor that. Oh, yes, this is really nice. I can highly recommend this.
Yeah, that's great. I like that. So that's protect. Well, obviously the clue's in the name, Protector. Yeah, duh. Okay, yeah, my bad. But still, really, really good game that. So that is Protector. And again, I'll just show you the Amcog sales page. So for all information about Amcog games, including sales and information, that's www.amcog-games.co.uk. So one thing I just want to show you briefly, and this is a really nice feature with most, if not all, of the Amcog software, is that with Risk OS, you have the main application with a little explanation mark at the front. That's called a pling, and that indicates it's an application that you can double click. So it's the same as an app on Mac or a .exe would be on PC. If I hold down the shift key and I double click, it actually opens the folder inside the pling, and that contains all the resources that makes the application. And what I really like is that the a lot of the source code is actually still here. So if I shift and let's double click the run image, like so. So I shift double click, it'll open up in, usually it's the text editor or if you've got a strong head loaded. And then we can actually have a look at the source code. So we can see how this game is actually working. And this is all BBC basic. And there's simple commands. Those of you that are familiar with BASIC will recognise some of this. So once you play the game, if you're interested in how it works, you can actually have a look underneath and see if there's anything you can borrow or think, oh, yes, that's great. How did we use that? A bit later on in today's presentation, we'll be looking at the AMCOG kit. Uh, Tony released a full kit that allowed you to actually build games and have elements to be able to build games on risk quest we'll have a look at that later on i'll have it here so that's something to bear in mind with all these games you can actually see literally under the bonnet under the lid how they work okay let's move on let's have a look at legends of magic now this was a game that i helped beta test one of the first games i think i did so i had an early copy of this and i beta tested it so let's have a look at legends ah now this might happen occasionally Basically, the sound you're hearing is uses a custom module system, which we don't have installed. Not to panic. Luckily, the audio modules come included with the game. So if I double click the audio modules, you'll get this system pling. Now, if I go to my main boot drive, where I have my boot folder, on the Raspberry version, it's the SD card. I double click. And then we have the boot folder. No, sorry, system folder. So I click system once and I drag this folder into here and I click merge. There we go. We can close those now. That should now have installed the missing sound module. So with a bit of luck. Hey presto, we boot. It's as simple as that to install new drivers required to run these games. Here we are, so I am credited. I don't broadcast the communications, that's me there. So yeah, so we'll start a new game. Now again, the controls, relatively simple. Enter, use, space, examine, D drop, P pick up. I'm not gonna remember any of this, but uh, let's go anyway. So this has a sort of an isometric type view to it. Luckily, you do actually have the buttons here you can press. So I'm going to pick that up. And I can examine a wand. Ah, oh, pick that up. There we go. I think we've got a magic portal. There we are. What's that? Sparkling Ruby, so we'll say uh, pick up. So it's a very different type of game to the games we've been showing you so far. It's got a much different pace, but again, it's all written in BBC Basic. Hmm. I'll go around this way. Ah. 
So we've got an axe. Oh, we've got to drop something. Um, I'll drop that. And I'll pick up the axe. Again, the sound on this one is quite quiet anyway, I think. Just add you a bit of volume there. Hopefully that's a bit better. You can hear that now. It's quiet in my headphones, this one, so... Ah, I don't think that's good, whatever it is. No, that's definitely not good. Okay, that didn't work. Um... A lot of things in this game is about problem solving, so... Everything you're seeing tonight has been created by Anthony. Audio, visuals, gameplay and all. It's all coded in BBC Basic. It's running on Visco S, which is an alternative operating system, which now calls Raspberry Pi its main home. It actually originates from the BBC Micro and the Acorn series of British home PC computer. And the operating system survived the collapse of Acorn and is now on the Raspberry Pi free to use. So it just shows you what one person can do on their own as an indie developer.
that up, use it, pick up, use, drop, pick up, there you are. Ah. Ah. How do you press the right key? Give you a tool. Um, that's really broken now, so we'll drop that. Pick that up. Okay, nothing else here, so we'll go back the way we came, I guess. been here before. Yes, we have. What's really nice is it actually remembers where you've dropped objects in the game world. So that bottle we used originally for health, I do have another one now, to be honest with you, but never mind. That's still there in the game field as we're playing. Ah, right. I forgot about the wand. Put the health back. There we go. Drop. It seems really obvious, and he's like, oh yeah, wand. Of course. Thank you. 
can use a good axe to actually chop through trees and things so we can now get to build our life back up. Drop, pick up, use. There we go. Pick up, use, drop. You get the idea. It's actually really nice to be able to have the click and point functionality in the game as well. What is that? A wand. We've got a wand. Don't need another wand. Don't know where my axe has gone. <laughs> I've, uh, I dropped my axe. And I'm not sure if I was meant to have done that. Just drop those there a minute. All right, they're out the way. Ah, there we are. Couldn't, couldn't see it, hiding. Okay. So, we can now hack away. There we go. Well, it's all right. Probably shouldn't, but we'll leave it for now. Okay, that's a look at what we're doing. I think we've already been that way. So I clearly missed something. Yeah, we've definitely been that way. There's the bits of broken remains of everything.
Now am I going to get that health? <laughs> Potion. Right, okay. Oh, not you, not you. Go away. Oh, right, that didn't work. Oh, 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 oh. Um, right, that really didn't work. Ah. Yeah, bear with me a minute. Luckily, thanks to very good game design, there is a lot of um, potions and healths and things that you need. There we are. We'll just stay away from basically plants, trees, people, anything really. Uh, let's drop that then. Uh, we'll pick up what's... What the enemies of the... Let's just uh, use that. What? It's not the correct key. Ah, right. Okay. Um, hang on. Hang on. Right. about this like uh, tactical thing of thinking right how do we um, how do we go about well, not that way. how do we go about doing this
does the key work on the door answer? No, it doesn't. I know, that's what I was thinking. You think that makes sense, but it says it's the wrong key. Am I back to where I started from? I am. Hmm. Not sure about what that means. I've, do you know what I've done? I've missed something really obvious. I'm just trying to fathom out what it is. Squeeze with a gap. Where is the ruby to... Oh, don't tell me I needed the ruby. <laughs> I've left it the other side of the map. Uh, okay. Right. Don't panic. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, I'm going to use that a minute. Um, I lost it, basically. <laughs> Okay, I think we're going to leave that one there. Let's just see if the save engine works. Save. Oh, it does. So, with this game, you can actually save your progress, or in my case, lack of progress, and come back at a later date. Now, of course, we can start with an escape. And we'll uh, close that one there. Yeah, so that's Legends of Magic. Uh, fantastic game. Um, but don't forget, or don't put down your ruby when you pick it up, because, um, yeah. <laughs> And again, when you click quit, it says press space or click to exit. That's common with most basic programs in Risk OS. So that's Legends of Magic. And again, you can find out information about all the games I'm showcasing tonight. That's over on the AMCOG website. That's www.amcog-games.co.uk. Right then, let's move on now. Let's have a look at Mop Tops. Now, let's see if this will boot up. Yes, it will because I did install the module for this. So this is Mop Tops. This is a kind of a clone of Lemmings, sort of. It works slightly differently, and you did see the uh, presentation when I was uh, interviewing Anthony at the start of today's broadcast. That was uh, done at the Southwest Computer Show earlier in the year, and Mop Tops was one of the games that he actually showed play. So let's have a play ourselves, see where we get to. Okay. So we've got these things sort of down here. Now if I put a fan there, it's going to blur them across. There we go. Oh, hang on, hang on. Spring. There we are, like so. Level 
lovely. And you get a passcode. So this is, does use a passcode system. Press enter to continue. Okay. So we just gave them one of them a drill. And we're going to need the drill again. Ladders. Hang on. Oh, now you're going the wrong way. Oh no. Spring. Right, a couple of fatalities here, but not to worry. Drink of water. While we do this, let's just speed up some time. Where are they gone? Come on. So this, if you click and hold the time button, it will speed up. Let's use it by 4x. That's just in case somebody goes for a bit of a wander the wrong way. There we go. Time is ticking, so we need to. Oh, right. Um, uh, think about this. Right. On there. Go over there. Down. Down, down, down. Down. Up. 
pass. It is a pass. Just figured that out. I just thought I'd be really clever, but you know, that's, that's dangerous thinking. So take that block out of the way. Okay. Got this now. Ah, there, ah, there we go. Okay. Here. 
There we go. Let's just speed this up a little bit. There we go. That's a very clever level. Very well put. Oh, right, okay. I saw a key over there, so I'm just trying to figure out what we're trying to do. Uh, okay, so logically we're going to... I think we've got a bomb. Not use bombs yet. Oh, I see. Okay, I got it. I've got enough time, I don't know. Uh, that was a bad area. I don't have a lot of time now. Just sat there going, what the hell? I don't understand. Uh, no, we need to put you there. Time to do this. Oh, this is going to be tight. Oh, this is going to be tight. Three, two, one. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, no! Okay. I like this last code feature. Right. Okay, we can do this.
time in. Have we got time? Have we got enough time to do this? Okay, right, let's try that again. Okay, let's not mess this up this time. Down. Oh my God. 
it and as i've been saying all night any information you want about these games from amcog games you can find from their website that's www.amcog-games.co.uk right moving on let's have a look at something a little bit different now so this is zombie Or Island of the Undead, sorry, get the name right. And this again uses the Amcog 3D engine. Excuse me, let's have a drink of water. Right, let's um let's have a start then. So this is a first person shooter. a lot of the same assets from the previous Amcog games and here are the zombies. I'm trying to remember this is a Raycaster engine. Might be, looks like it. But again it's all BBC basic.
tulee siis se, että tulee mä. Okay, that didn't just quite <laughs> creep me out a little bit. <laughs> oh, these are a bit more proactive than the um, first lot, aren't they? Come on.
<laughs> no, not that. <laughs> right, moving on. Come on, let me get stuck on the wall. Go this way, go this way. over there.
said I was lost again, would you believe me? I had the blade, I've lost the blade now. I've got the view up. Okay, that's not going anywhere. But still, really, really impressive piece of work. We're going to have to leave that one there for now. So let's get, we'll quit out of that. Okay, let's have a look at two of the most recent games that came from Amcog. We'll start with Stunt Racer. Again, I was a beta tester for this game as well. We're back to a, a 2D top-down uh, perspective now for this. So this is Stunt Racer, which is uh, this year, 2019, from Amcog. So let's. Uh, I'm going to set an easy... Select a car we want. Don't ask me why. Okay, we're off. So it's arrow keys. Oh. Oh. No, no, we don't want to do that. Oh, come on. And we're off. Over the ramps. <laughs> Strange. Okay. okay, sorry. <clears throat> Take this more seriously. Right. Let's try that again. That was easy as well. I blame the car. It's the car. New car. Okay, and we're off. Don't miss the jumps. <laughs> oh, they get to turn the corner. Oh dear. Okay. First jump. <laughs> I shouldn't be enjoying this as much as I am. Sorry. <laughs> oh, right. Hang on. Hang on. There's a break. Arrow keys. Break. Reverse. Yeah, there's a break. Steer faster when using controls. Okay. Okay, right. Oh yeah. That's cool. Uh, don't it. Okay, let's try this again.
boring bit of grass. I will do a lap. With a heavy hair on the night, but I will. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. I will do a lap. Everyone's got all night, haven't they? Let's try trap two. I don't know why. Let's just see what happens. Up on the door, is I panicked and preempted a corner that wasn't there, basically, what happened. Good. 
We're not good. We were good. We're not anymore. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, that's Stunt Drivers from Amcog Games for Risk OS. Uh, we'll just exit that one now. So, again, just to remind you, all the games you've seen tonight, if you want more information on how to buy and where to buy, you can head over to the Amcog Games website. That's www.amcog-games.co.uk. Right, let's move on to one of the most recent releases, which is Arcade Escape. This came out literally for the Wakefield show. So this is, what, a week, two weeks old or something? Need to pick up. Okay. I'm not going to remember this, but let's go. Choose the character. Okay, so it's the classic kind of locked doors again. Luckily, with the level design, it's uh, quite generous. I see a purple key up there. And I see a purple door there. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> No, that's not going to work. Uh, right. I was just demonstrating Arcade Escape. Uh, unfortunately, I won't have time to run through that again if you didn't see it. This is the latest release from Amcog Games. 
Now, one final thing I did want to show you tonight, and this is the one that really is worth getting. This is the COG kit. And basically it is a graphics library and code library for from AMCOG for making games mostly written in BBC Basic. So in documentations, there's examples, there's a case study here, and there's a PDF, which you can open. Most stock builds of risk 5 have a PDF uh, viewer in them now. So you can read through, and it talks about how the code works, how to insert things in obey files. So it's about how to program as well using BBC Basic. Then if logic. And all, it's all basically here. How to use the library. So we have these little pop-up games. Show you the logic card to move left, right. We'll come back out of that car. We've already seen the car engine, how that works. So, and because these are planes, if we shift, we can actually have a look, and we can see the code itself, which isn't a huge amount of code. Most of it is comments just showing you exactly where things are in the source code so you can follow it through to where you need to go. So we have the libraries themselves. So we have core, core kit, sound kit, tiles kit. So it has the scrolling engine in it as well. We have web files that can be used. So sound files that can be used. We have music. Stock music that can be used on the system as well. We do have graphics elements. So let's just have a look at a graphics element. There's a little sprite here. So you've got balls, egg, sword. So we have graphics elements that you can use to build games. Zombies, I've got a zombie. There we are. There's the zombie, and there's all the different frames of the animation. So this is all built into the kit for you to use. And then we have, uh, where are we, games. We actually have some games built into this already. So let's have a look at uh, Cyborg. And these are bundled with the development kit. Very sort of simple maze type, Ooh. <laughs> maze type logic. Oh, come on! But you get the idea. And we can click exit again. Let's have a quick look at Mutant Penguin. The idea of these example games that are free with the kit. Let's have a look at Sparky. Okay, so we have a sort of reverse Pac Man type thing going on. Again, all written in BBC Basic and using this new resource kit from Amcom Games. Until you do that, of course. 
quits so that is basically the most of the current games from amcog and i'd just like to say a huge thank you to anthony bertram for allowing me to uh, well lending me these games to show you here live on eight till late from wi-fi sheep tonight again just a quick reminder if you want any more information about any of the games or the amcog game development pack that you've seen tonight you can go over to the amcog games website that's www.amcog-games.co.uk you'll be able to see a repeat of tonight's live broadcast which will be uploaded to our wi-fi sheep on youtube channel that's www.youtube.com forward slash wi-fi sheep time just gone seven minutes past 10 here in the uk and that brings us to the end of the live stream here on twitch i just once again like to thank you so much for your company really hope you enjoyed it and to remind you we will be back next week from eight o'clock for more games fun talk and who knows what else again i'd like to apologize for the slight technical problems we've had tonight but hopefully it hasn't ruined your enjoyment too much so on behalf of everyone here at Wi-Fi Sheep, live from Shropshire, England, this is Tom Williamson wishing you a happy and peaceful night. Good night. <laughs>